Good evening and welcome to Tiger Field in Sterling, Colorado as we get you set for the start of Brush Beat Digger Football on 1010 KSIR. I'm Ben Black. I'm very glad you've joined us on this Thursday evening, a Thursday night football game for the Brush Beat Diggers and the Sterling Tigers. We will be following the conclusion of the volleyball match. Joining our sister station on the Eastern Plains Sports Network, 105.7 KPMX for a simulcast broadcast. The Brush Beat Diggers coming in after a win on their homecoming last weekend. The Sterling Tigers coming in after a win on their homecoming last weekend. Both of these clubs are looking to go to 2-0 and in Patriot East play. The Sterling Tigers, one of the top-ranked teams in the state, are the favorites coming into this evening's contest. It is a cold Thursday evening, 27 degrees outside. The wind at times has been near 30 miles an hour today in Sterling. It's down to 10 miles an hour, and it is blowing right to left on your radio dial across the field. So it should not be a factor. I had an opportunity to talk with Sterling Tiger head coach Rob Boozmany today. Sterling Sterling, a team that is pretty pass happy, especially in kind of that new brand of football way where, where you throw those short passes and kind of let them become runners and that type of thing, is actually going to be helped by the fact that the wind has died down. What they're not going to be helped by is the fact that it feels like it is 17 degrees outside with wind chill right now. I was down on the field. It is hard. That ball is going to die every opportunity it gets and it's going to get hurt to get hit tonight. So for the Brush Beat Diggers, if they want to pull off the upset in this game, the Beat Diggers need to utilize their savvy rushing game. They need, need to utilize their physicality and try and keep this one as a low scoring affair. Not going to be easy for a Sterling team that put up quite a few points in quite a few matchups this year against some of the state's top teams after the opening couple weeks where they didn't score till the fourth quarter, they figured out their offensive end of things and have really started rolling in that regard. We have both teams starting lineups, so let me, let's meet those. They are brought to you by Equitable Savings and Loan. Mobile banking on the go makes it easier for you when you're on the go. Check them out online at equitable-savings.com. For the hosting Sterling Tigers who will be in their black uniforms with the shiny silver numbers that nobody can read except for the people on the field and occasionally even the people on the field can't read them. It's Peyton Rose, Tucker Myers, Jackson, Kyle Jackson, McCracken, Ryan Wecker, Brock Burkholder, Connor Polins, Cade Nelson, Zach Boozmany, Brady Albrandt, and Drew Book, along with Keaton Kanab for head coach Rob Boozmany. That's the defensive starters for the Sterling Tigers. The offensive starters for the Brush Beat Diggers are Ivana Cardenas, Alejandro Maltros Garcia, Luke Sewald, Nick Wellen, Kyle Wellen, Cesar Enojos, Ismael Hernandez, Dominic Ontiveros, Jalen Martinez, uh, Servando Herrera, and Edgar Escalante for head coach Lance Schwint. But with those starters, which were announced in the stadium here in Sterling, Colorado, the uh, the starters will actually see the Sterling Tigers field the opening kickoff as they uh, kick this one off. Brush won the coin toss, elected to receive, and uh, will be sending themselves on the defensive side of the field first. Uh, a bold move for uh, Coach Lance Schwint, knowing Sterling's offense is their biggest weapon. Sometimes coaches would think they're going to keep them off the field early on and try and especially win the clock battle, but I think from a mentality standpoint, Coach Schwent wants his team to go out there and stop Sterling on this first one to gain quite a bit of momentum in this contest. I'm excited for this one. I've not done, uh, for, for, for those that don't tune in to 1010 Preps and more weekdays at 1 p.m. right here on 1010 KSIR, you know I'm a six-man guy and an eight-man guy. I, I got to looking back a, a, at my play-by-play. -play. I actually haven't done an 11-man football game in four years. It's been more than four years since I have done an 11-man football game, so expect to hear some confusion in the uh, in the formation descriptions because I'm used to, you know, everybody spreading all over the field and turning into track meets. Excited to see this, though, because this is a matchup that regardless of sport, these two programs bring the best out in one another. It's a rivalry, but it's not a bitter Rivalry. It's not one of the, those rivalries where you have to be worried for your safety or whatever the case may be. It is just a rivalry where the two programs bring the best out in one another. 
and I think we're going to see the best in this one. We're about set for opening kickoff, and as we mentioned, the Brush Beat Diggers will be kicking it off. Our opening kickoff is brought to you by Buildings by Design. When it comes to experience, Buildings by Design is the best in the business. Quality and commitment with their experience, it makes Buildings by Design the only choice when it comes to your next project. The Brush Beat Diggers will be looking to utilize their ground game, but if you listen to Beat Digger Blast Off, our hour-long pregame show on 1010 KSIR, you heard that uh, Coach Schmidt was talking a little bit about some of the appropriate times to pass and try and catch the Sterling Tigers off guard when it comes to maybe the defensive end of things and the Sterling Tigers most certainly will try to remain that. They've got some very, very talented linebackers, uh, most uh, most notably uh, from a name standpoint. You'll probably hear about at the same clip that you're going to hear Nick Wellen when the beat diggers are on defense. You're going to hear Drew Book's name called. Those two guys are built very similarly and uh, I think are going to be very key impact players. The beat diggers are in their road white unis. They have their yellow pants and their maroon helmets on. The Sterling Tigers will have Connor Polins back to return with Peyton Rose in the two-man back. The kicking, though, it's not going to go very far. Expect maybe something fielded by one of the up men that are standing at the 20. Beat diggers in this first quarter will be going left to right on your radio dial on 1010 KSIR. And I'm Ben Black. I'm very glad you've joined us on the Eastern Plains Sports Network for this Friday night. They've landed all the way down, and the ball's going to get in the air at 728 on this Thursday evening. A chilly, chilly Thursday evening. And the Beat Diggers will drive the ball down the field, and the Tigers will field it. The ball's picked up at the 18-yard line by Connor Pullins. He splits the defense of the Beat Diggers, gets all the way out near the 40-yard line. I believe got pulled down one yard shy of it, and it will be first and 10 for the Sterling Tigers at the 39-yard line to get underway on this Thursday evening. Sterling Tigers utilize Brock Shala as their quarterback. The Tigers will split the field with two wide to the near, one to the far. Tucker Myers is the ace receiver on the far. And then the ace backfield for the Sterling Tigers as the Tigers showed down under center, then elected to come back to the shotgun motion. They're up man to the far side. Belly handoff inside to Pullins, and he is drilled and dropped by Wellen. And the Sterling Tigers are held to a gain of about a four-yard gain as we saw the first and ten underway. So the Tigers will come out staying with the no huddle and staying with the same formation, two wide near, one far. Shotgun formation, Poland's flanking to the right of Shala. Now Shala will look at the line of scrimmage and get the call in this no-huddle offense. He'll take the snap, and he's going to drop back and look to pass. Pressure up the middle, finds Myers far side, a gain of eight on the play. And the Sterling Tigers will have the first first down of the game with 11.13 to go in this first quarter. Tigers made it past midfield, and the Beat Diggers quickly swallowing that up, but there's that quick passing game for the Sterling Tigers, as did not allow the Beat Diggers any time to breathe. They'll go to the I formation, which was successful in the second half and latter stages of the first half of the Mercy Rule win last week for the Sterling Tigers. Shala under center, he'll turn, show the handoff up the middle, bouncing off one tackler and two, and getting a first down and then some for the... Sterling Tigers that Drew Book will get that carry and Book will get the what works down a 14 yard run and another first down for the Sterling Tigers all the way at the Brush Beat Digger 34 yard line 10 and a half to go in the first quarter of this scoreless game Tigers sticking with that eye formation Poland's dotting the eye a wide to either side up end on the far side, hand off to Pullins. He'll bounce off one man and get gobbled up after he bounced off and gained almost four on the play. Tigers three carries for 22 yards thus far, and we'll have a second down and six, two minutes in to quarter number one. Tigers will huddle up for the first time in this game as the Beat Diggers have seen the no-huddle offense so far. Off that huddle up, they'll stick in the same formation, I formation with a wide to either side. 
and Shala under center. Shala takes a snap. He'll turn. He'll hand off. Bouncing far side for the Sterling Tigers is Bornhoft, and he's swallowed up after a gain of, we'll call it, seven. He's right near the line. And Riley Bornhoft will get a first down, so a gain of seven on the play on the fifth play of this drive. The Tigers collect their third first down of this drive, and will have a first and ten at the Brush Beat Digger 20 five yard line I formation once again as the Tigers are looking to use the ground game to their advantage long snap count Shala he'll hand off to Book who barrels up the middle once through one man and another before finally being hit by a host of beat diggers but not before he gains nine on the play and it'll be second down and one with under nine to go in the first quarter of this scoreless game Tigers will pull Tucker Myers, their primary receiver, off the field here. Looking like maybe they'll go more power formation on this second and one. They've just continued to add more and more big men to the bunch. They will. Two tight ends set eye formation and one wide split to the near side. That's Jackson Kyle. Shala under center motions his near side tight end to lead block for Bornoff who gains a couple on the seventh play of the drive the fourth first down of the drive and the Tigers will have a first and ten in beat digger red zone at the 13 yard line with 8.15 to go in quarter number one Tigers marching bit by bit by bit their running game was successful as mentioned last week late in the first half and through the entirety of the second half in their victory against Valley. 7.50 to go in the first quarter as once again Shala will go under center eye formation behind him. Books the fullback with the two tight end line. They run the option near side. Shala will keep it himself. Got hamstrung by one of the outside linebackers for the beat diggers. Pulled down for a gain of a couple. That was on the tackle. Jace Krieger, I believe, will be second down and eight after a gain of two for Brock Shala. Or second down and eight after a gain of two. Did I say second and two? Tigers right near the 10-yard line. Have chewed up almost five minutes a clock on this opening drive. I formation. The dot on the eye is Connor Pollins. One wide to the near side with the two tight end line. A motion. Tight end to go double far side. Quick handoff up the middle trying to catch off guard the uh, beat diggers. And... Uh, Aaron the, the Tigers will gain about four on the play. That was, I believe, Poland's on the carry, and it'll be third down, and we'll call it three with 6.40 to go. First third down of the drive on the tenth play of this drive for the Sterling Tigers. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. They'll move their wide receiver to the far side of the field, and the two tight end line and eye formation. Shaw under center. He'll run the option near side. Pitch out to the near side. Stretching to the end zone and in for a touchdown for the Sterling Tigers. That's Connor Polins who takes it to the house from six yards out. And the Sterling Tigers cap off the 10-play 61-yard drive on the six-yard touchdown run with 6-10 to go in quarter number one. So the Tigers will attempt the point after. Following the touchdown, and the kick is up, and the kick is good, so it is 7-0. The Tigers had a 10-play, 61-yard touchdown drive in which they converted four first downs and scored on their lone third down attempt. Nine runs and one pass for a team that has become exceptionally pass-happy of late. Northeastern Junior College wants to take care of you when it comes to your future. Think about Northeastern Junior College. Take the next step in becoming a Plainsman. Visit the all-new njc.edu and get all the information you need. We said the Brush Beat Diggers needed to put themselves into a position where they ate up clock, where they utilized their run. And uh, Sterling took the page out of the Beat Diggers playbook and did it themselves on the first drive, and now we'll see the Beat Diggers offense for the first time this evening as Clover Dans will be doing the kicking for the Sterling Tigers. Sterling Tiger football has been exceptional when it comes to their offense of late. Their defense has been a showcase, no question about it, throughout this season. 
Volleyball game is going on currently as well. Sterling up two sets to none after taking set to 25-12. That's on 105.7 KPMX. Meat Diggers field the kick, and Welling gets all the way out to the 35 or 36-yard line. That's where the Brush Beat Diggers will start their first drive of this after this evening's contest. Our first drive of the game for the Brush Beat Diggers is brought to you by Western Engineering Consultants. Engineering and consulting services for all your projects. A strong commitment to their clients is what sets them apart. Get your projects started the right way at Western Engineering Consultants. Beat Diggers will come out with a split backfield and a wide receiver to either side. Maltos Garcia will be under center. The misdirection offensive runs is what they were working on during the pregame end of things, and they'll do that once again. And a misdirection didn't misdirect the Tiger defense. Wellen got the handoff trying to stretch to the far side and get swallowed up by a host of Tigers who were already in the backfield. A loss of about three on the play will bring up second down and 13 for the Beat Diggers. 5.45 to go in quarter number one. Sterling Tigers. Defense forced nine turnovers in the first two weeks of the season, and they've not let up since. They had a pick six last week as a part of their 49-0 victory over Valley. Split backfield once again behind Maltos Garcia. Quick handoff up the middle. Tigers defense will swallow up Nick Wellen after he gained back what he lost and a yard more. So it'll be third down and nine after a gain of four. For the Beat Diggers with five minutes and counting to go. In quarter number one, trailing the Sterling Tigers, 7 nothing. Split backfield with one wide receiver to the far side. Maltos Garcia, hard snap count. He'll drop back, look to pass. Pressure up the middle for the Sterling Tigers, airing it out near side and over the head of his intended receiver, Luke Seawald, who'd run a flat across the midfield. Pass falls incomplete, and one would presume the Brush Beat Diggers will punt the ball to the Sterling Tigers with 4.41 to go in quarter number one. Kyle Wellen is the punter for the Brush Beat Diggers, and Pollins is back to return the punt for the Sterling Tigers inside his own 20. The kick on this chilly night bounces at the 35 and is down at the 32 and that's where Sterling will start their second possession of this evening's contest. Our coverage on the Eastern Plains Sports Network is brought to you in part by B&B Appliance. They can help with all your appliance needs. Stop in and see what they can do for you. Check out them at 502 Ensign Street in Fort Morgan. 432 to go in quarter number one. Sterling will have a first and 10 from their own 32-yard line. They'll stick with that eye formation that they used for more than the majority of the first drive. Shala was set to go under center, and the Sterling Tigers were whistled for too many men in the huddle. The first penalty of the game goes against Sterling, making this first and 15 now. Tigers used 10 plays, averaging 6.1 yards per play on the first drive of the game. I formation with a wide receiver to either side. That means the tight end is up on the far side. Hand off to Polins who bounces into the heart of the beat digger defense and has swallowed up a myriad of guys there to drop him down after a gain of three on the play. It'll be second down and 12 or 11 for the Sterling Tigers after gaining back most of their penalty yardage. Wide receiver split to either side with the I formation once again as Shala will go under center. Hard snap count, and we got the interior of the Beat Digger defense to jump, so the Sterling Tigers will force the, uh, the Beat Diggers into a five-yard penalty and get back what they lost. The ball will march outside the 35 to the 36. We'll call it second down and six now. Or Sterling following the defensive offsides. Tigers will go back to their spread formation with two wide to the near side, one to the far. The feature receiver is going to be junior Brock Burkholder this time. Shotgun formation. Poland's flanking Shala to his right. 
Shala will drop back, look to pass, run the bubble screen near side to Peyton Rose. Rose gets the first down, and then some throws a stiff arm and busts free. He's down the field, the 30, the 20, the 10. He's into the end zone for a Sterling Tiger touchdown. A 64-yard touchdown pass for the Sterling Tigers on second down. The play looked like it had been swallowed up by the beat digger defense and Rose just squirted free of an arm tackle from one of the secondary members and took it to the house with 344 to go in quarter at number one. Wecker will kick to try and make this a 14 nothing ball game and it is blocked by the beat digger defense. So, the Tigers lead 13-0 after just a two-play drive that time. First drive was 10 plays for 61 yards. Second drive was two plays for 68. Highlighted by the 64-yard bubble screen that found the end zone from Brock Shala to Peyton Rose. Definitely not what the brush beat diggers wanted to do is give up one of those big blow plays to a Sterling team that has been able to use that momentum when they get those big plays in their advantage. Now the Beat Diggers, they need to find some offense because already down 13 nothing, having only touched the ball three times in an offensive manner. They need something positive right here. Ingmeyer Phillips Insurance knows that things happen in life. Make sure you're prepared with the right insurance coverage. Ingmeyer Phillips Insurance in Brush and Fort Morgan. Sterling Tigers. A 13 nothing with 3.44 to go, and they'll kick it off. Well and back to return for the brush beat diggers. He is hammered as he crosses the 30-yard line, and I think the ball popped free as he got drilled. He did. So a kickoff fumbled on the return, and Jackson Kyle, who got the hit, also came up with the recovery, and Sterling already up 13-0. will start with the ball in beat digger territory at the 33-yard line, looking to add to their two-score advantage. That's definitely not what the brush beat diggers needed right there. No question about that. The beat diggers needed a much more positive offensive manner, but this is kind of the feature on the uh, cold night where you see the Sterling Tigers having already found the end zone twice. We will soon be joining our sister station, 105.7 KPMX, here shortly, first and 10, handoff up the middle for the Sterling Tigers. And a big hit for Cade Nelson as he is drilled and dropped as he crosses the line of scrimmage. Got maybe a yard or two before Nick Wellen pulled him down. We'll call it a gain of two, and it will be second down and eight with 3.17 to go in the first quarter. Tigers. I'll run the play in from the sideline. They went no hurdle early to try and catch the beat diggers off guard. And then uh, started huddling back down when they went to this power formation. They're going to go two tight ends once again. But staying in the shotgun formation with a back to either side is Shala. Snap to Shala. He'll show the handoff. He'll roll to his right. And we get a flag on the play and a timeout taken by the Sterling Tigers. So we are going to take a break with them. Sterling's up 13 nothing. We'll join the simulcast with our sister station 105.7 KPMX after this on the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Make us all uncertain, but First National Bank in Fleming is there to make you certain. Certain that all of your financial needs will be taken care of. Their full service management team has been serving Northeast Colorado since 1917. For your checking and savings accounts, CODs, IRAs, and personal and agricultural loans, trust Logan County's home-owned bank, your teammate for financial assistance. First National Bank in Fleming, proud supporters of our community, member FDIC. Get in the seat of a John Deere 3E tractor and your next big project will seem a little less big. Because with intuitive operator station and easy attachment hookup, no job is too tough. So get to work because it's time to turn this land into your land. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. Visit 21st Century Equipment with locations in eastern Colorado, western Nebraska, and eastern Wyoming. Or visit us online at www.21stcenturyequipment.com. Eastern Plains Sports Network is 105.7 KPMX. 
We welcome you into Tiger Football Field. And for those of you who have been on 1010 KSIR, we welcome you back to Tiger Field. Sterling Football leads 13-0. I'm Ben Bleck, and they just converted a third down, a 14-yard pass for the Sterling Tigers quarterback in Brock Shala to Jackson Kyle. And the Tigers have already their fifth first down of the game, and it is first and ten from inside the Beat Digger 15, an out route thrown near side. The man that just caught the first down, Jackson Kyle, the intended recipient. The pass falls incomplete, and it will be second down and ten with 136 to go in the quarter. The Sterling Tigers have scored on a 10-play, 61-yard drive. The Brush Beat Diggers went three and out. The Tigers then got a 64-yard touchdown pass to Peyton Rose to go up 13-0, and then the ensuing kickoff was fumbled by the Beat Diggers, and the Tigers are in the red zone looking to go up three scores as we near the end of quarter number one. I formation behind Shala turn and a handoff to the fullback. I believe that is Book, and he gains maybe four on the play and will bring up third down and six as the Tigers can get a first down at the four yard line. Tigers have already converted two third downs, one into a touchdown, another just converted as we were coming into the first quarter, brought to you by First National Bank in Fleming, locally owned and locally operated. They're your teammate and financial assistance, First National Bank in Fleming, member FDIC, I formation, one wide receiver to the far side. Deep back for the Tigers is Poland. Shala will hand off to him. He bounces off a of one man. And inside the five doesn't quite get the first down for the Sterling Tigers. And it, it will be their first third down not converted in the game after a gain of five. And one would presume the Tigers will go for it on fourth and one with 32 seconds to go in this first quarter. Shala trotting the play in from the sideline. 19 seconds to go in the quarter. The Tigers break the huddle. One wide receiver in the formation. He's to the top side with Tucker Myers in an I formation on this fourth and one. May not even be a full one. They'll quick hand off up the middle to Book, and he barrels into the end zone for the Sterling Tigers. The Tigers going full back belly right there and book rumbles in from five yards out for a score and the sterling tigers are up three on the brush beat diggers with six seconds to go in quarter number one they lead 19 nothing after the rumble into the end zone to cap off the seven play drive following the fumble to kick off return tigers will go for two to my try and make it a full 21 Three wide receiver formation in ace backfield. Just a step behind Shala. They'll hand off the jet sweep. No, they won't. Kept by Shala, and he shimmies away from the defense and takes it in to make it 21 nothing in favor of the hosting Sterling Tigers. It is a chilly Friday night here in Sterling. It was 27 degrees at kickoff. It's already down to 25. The wind has continued to drop in its veracity. Nine miles an hour now, 15 degrees with the wind chill out this evening. And the Tigers have gone to the air just four times in this contest while running the ball 15 times. It's it's quite impressive what Sterling has done in their blocking assignments. Coach Rob many told me in an interview you can hear on the Eastern Plains Sports Network Facebook page at KPMX Sports with our Thursday podcast, Totally Tigers. He said, we got to work on our blocking assignments to make our running game more successful. Well, uh, I would say mission accomplished would, uh, would be the thought in that one. So the Tigers... So we have just six seconds left in the first quarter. We'll kick it off, and the Beat Diggers will look to return. The ball doesn't even get to Kyle Well in the deep back. It's fielded at about the 30-yard line, and the returner is run out of bounds at the 39. And that's where the Brush Beat Diggers will start just their second offensive possession of the ball game because the Sterling Tigers forced them to fumble on the last kickoff. That's the end of the first quarter, so we'll take a one-minute break and have quarter two next. Sterling Tigers lead the Brush Beat Diggers 21-0 on the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Are you tired of hearing about low interest rates only to find out they come with hefty loans?
Tiger Field, also on 1010 KSIR, Brush Fort Morgan. I'm Ben Black of the Sterling Tigers. Lead the Brush Beat Diggers 21 0 as quarter number two gets underway. And the Brush Beat Diggers run a sweet pitch far side to believe that was Jace Krieger. And he is swallowed up after a gain of just one. After the first quarter of play, Sterling not only leads 21 0. But they have 157 yards of offense while holding the Brush Beat Diggers to just one yard in quarter number one. Our second quarter of coverage is brought to you by Ice Lanes. Enjoy your friends and the latest NFL games with bowling at Ice Lanes. Spend your Sundays at 208 with 10th Avenue in Sterling. Second and nine with the ball spotted up at the Sterling Tiger 41 yard or no at their own 41 for the Brush Beat Diggers. They're going right to left in this quarter. Hand off up the near side for Nick Wellen. Wellen, who was held to just that one yard of offense, gets a gain of about six on the play. And it'll bring up a third and short after the gain on the play. Tiger Volleyball just winning in three. We're very glad you're now joining us. Also on 105.7 KPMX as this game has been heard in full on 1010 KSIR, all part of the Eastern Plains Sports Network. I'm Ben Blecka. It will be a split backfield. One wide receiver to the near side now motioning to the far. Altos Garcia takes a snap, hands off to Wellen. Wellen gets near the sticks, but I don't believe he got the first down right near midfield. Again, a couple on the play. And the Tigers have forced a third down. Fail once again for the Beat Diggers, but fourth and very short. We'll see how aggressive Coach Lynch went once to get for the Brush Beat Diggers. Kyle Wellen late sprinting in from the far sideline, replacing... Hunter Dunn, who was the wide receiver last time. Back judge is already counting on fourth and short as Maltos Garcia brings his team to the line of scrimmage. Split backfield. A look for the handoff, and they'll get it to Nick Wellen. And Wellen will barrel forward for a gain of two on the play and pick up the first first down of the game for the Brush Beat Diggers. But 9.40 to go in the second quarter, and Sterling up 21-0. So also be the first play that Brush has run in Sterling territory. First and 10 from the Tiger 49-yard line. Split backfield, one wide to the near side. Maltos Garcia under center. Take the snap, show the handoff. Now rolling out, looking to pass. And the pass finds Wellen, who was the initial play fake receiver. And then he ran the flat far side, a gain of six or seven on the play for the Brush Beat Diggers will bring up a second down, and we'll call it three. Tiger defense, first drive for the Brush Beat Diggers, a loss of three, a gain of four, and an incomplete pass followed by a punt. Beat Diggers will have a three-man backfield this time. In that line formation, and they'll hand off this time, I believe, that is Krieger, and he'll get the first down after a gain of four on the play. So the Beat Diggers doing much better in controlling the line of scrimmage, which was their key to the game today. I think Sterling Tigers' key to the contest is exactly what they've gotten, the quick start. The Tigers struck early, really winding the clock in with a 10-play drive. But then that big pop on the 64-yard touchdown drive completely changed the momentum of this game. Sterling's key to the contest brought to you by Coons Pump and Well Supply. Get your well water ready for winter at 522-2305. Nick Wellen, the carrier on first and 10. Gain of about four on the play for the Brush Beat Diggers. That was the seventh play of this drive. Now under eight to go in the first half. The ball is spotted up at the Sterling Tiger 33-yard line. Tiger defense not getting the same penetration on this second offensive drive of the game for the Beat Diggers like they got in the first. Going to the three-man backfield in the seven-man line has helped Brush. They'll motion near side to with Krieger, then try the inside handoff to that's Wellen, Nick Wellen, who gets gobbled up as he hits near the line of scrimmage and pushed back a loss of a couple on the play. Will bring up third down and eight on the Sterling Tiger defensive side. That's what they've looked for is getting some of those negative plays and those big opportunities because of their defense this season. Of course, winning games in the first couple weeks of the year using their defense in their favor. 
and then finally getting their offense rolling their direction. The Beat Diggers will go with the receiver for the first time on this drive. That'll be Hunter Dunn that is spread to the far side. Now the motion out of the backfield and down the middle. The pass is found. That is Luke Seawald, the tight end. He had it pop off his hands, got hit, and then found a grip on the ball at the 25. A gain of 11 on the play and a brush beat digger first down. They've converted a fourth down. Now they've converted a third down on this drive, and the 10th play of the drive will be a first and 10 from the Sterling Tiger 23-yard line. This is what Brush said they needed to do, control the tempo of this game. Sterling gave them a dose of their own medicine early, but now we're seeing Brush do what they anticipated doing. Maltos Garcia under center. He'll take a handoff quick up the middle. That is Nick Wellen on the play, gained maybe two, bringing up second down and we'll call it about eight at 549 to go in the first quarter and sterling leading 21-0 in this patriot east showdown beat diggers now going with two wide receivers in the split backfield tight end is lined up on the far side of the line they'll pitch sweep to the far side of that with jace krieger krieger gets the first down gets inside the 10 pushed out of bounds at the nine yard line that'll be A gain of 14 or 15 on the play. And the fourth first down converted on this drive for the Brush Beat Diggers will result in a first and goal. As we approach five minutes to go in half number one. 21st Century Equipment has all the John Deere equipment for your operation. Check them out in Sterling and Fort Morgan because nothing runs like a deer. Wide receiver to the far side. Three-man backfield kind of offset in an L-shape this time. Hand off to Wellen. The Tigers got a hold of Wellen. He pushed forward and got pulled down about the six-yard line, a gain of two or three on the play. Second down and goal from the six-yard line for the Beat Diggers as they look to find Pater for the first time today. Tiger defense had faced just three offensive plays coming into this quarter. After holding the Beat Diggers to one yard in the first quarter, they've now eclipsed 50 on this drive alone. Line backfield once again with three backs back there. Quick handoff, popping off one man and another as well, and he gets pulled down at the one-yard line. Or did he get in? He did get into the end zone. He stretched out and took a two. Pater for the first time today on a six-yard touchdown run with 3.59 to go. In the second quarter, the Brush Beat Diggers have scored for the first time this afternoon or this evening. 21-6 with the point after kick forthcoming. The kicker for the Beat Diggers is Keegan Link. And the kick is drilled through. Nope, it missed just to the right. So the kick is no good, but it is 21-6 as we welcome in Chris Bull Brom, who huffed his way over here from the volleyball game on this uh, special doubleheader tonight. Uh, Give us a recap for those of us that didn't tune in. Tigers 1 and 3, right? Tigers 1 and 3, 25, uh, 16, 12, and 11, I believe, was the final tally of the third set. Uh, Typical Sterling fashion. uh, Took it a little bit to get going. Gave up a handful of points set, but uh, bared down in the second two sets, and they're now 38-0 in sets played to start the year. Quite impressive. It's been impressive here at the football field as well. 157 yards offense for the Sterling Tigers. The Brush Beat Diggers were able to cap off a 13-play, 61-yard drive with the six-yard touchdown run by Nick Wellen. I believe that is now 11 scores on the year for him. They chewed up over six minutes of clock on that drive. Sterling chewed up over six minutes of clock on their first drive of the game as well 359 to go in the first half and sterling up 21 to 6 coming up at halftime we'll relive a recent game of sterling tiger action on 105.7 kpmx with tigers 365 i couldn't tell you what's going to happen on 1010 ksr because john beltran kept that a secret (laughs) he's he's like that that guy Beat Diggers will kick for the first time in this game. Eric Urbina, their senior, will put the foot into it. It's fielded for the Sterling Tigers, but not cleanly by, I believe that was Rose, pile of bodies at the 22-yard line, and the Tigers do come up with it, and that's where Sterling will start with their first possession of the quarter. 
You what have this? I missed, John? Or Ben, what have I missed? You have missed a lot of Sterling running. 19 plays run, only four passes wow. for the Sterling Tigers. One of the passes was a 64-yard touchdown drive. I'm going to let you take care of trying to read those shiny silver numbers on the back of the Well, uniform. I've got a little bit of practice doing. I, I'm hoping my stats are right because uh, I've been guessing most of the game who the Tigers are on the field. All shotgun formation for Shala. Tigers set up on the far hash mark. Brush nearly jumps off sides on the hard snap count from Shala. They've jumped off one time already in this game. That was when Shala was under center where Sterling spent most of the game. Shala directs traffic at the line, takes a shot, gun snap, looks to throw pass over the middle into the danger zone. A trio of defenders underneath. He was looking for the slot receiver McCracken. Dangerous pass there from Brock. Shala falls incomplete, nearly picked off. It's a cool Friday night, but not as cold as we anticipated it to be. It's down to 23 degrees right now. Make sure your heater's ready for the winter months because they're here. Call Baylor Mechanical, 970-522-0471. Tigers moving left to right on your radio dial in this second quarter. 21-6, second down and 10. About their own 24-yard line. Shotgun snap for Shala, passing again, this time the screen pass to Tucker Myers, and Myers will carry a defender with him to about the 29, call it the 29-yard line, a gain of five. And credit for about six on the play. Third down and three, Tigers hurry to the line, ball spotted near Hash. Shotgun again for Shala, two receivers to his left, single receiver to the right is Myers. The handoff up the middle, that is Connor Polens, and he's going to have the first down as he falls forward. Polens had the touchdown run with 6.10 to go in the first quarter, and Polens has been able to compile, uh, and that's now 29 yards of rushing. First and 10 from the 35-yard line of the Tigers as they... Look to march down the field and add on to their already large lead before the half. Shala again looking to throw pass near side is picked off. Not sure who he was intending to throw that ball to, but it was collected by number 23, Kyle, Kyle Wellen. So an interception for the Sterling Tigers and now Brush, who has all three of their timeouts remaining, has 247 to try and make this a one-score game. I think he was looking for the receiver who was streaking down the sideline. I don't know if there was miscommunication as to which route he was supposed to run. The ball just didn't come out cleanly from Brock Shaw's hands, but either way, it's a pick for Kyle Wellen, and the Beat Diggers have an opportunity to do something offensively before the half. For those wondering on KSIR at halftime, championship reflections preview. Two-way state volleyball champions in 1985. The brush. Maltos Garcia under center, line backfield. He will motion Kyle Wellen, the man who came up with the interception, out. Nick Wellen will run behind him on the far side. Wellen gets forward for a gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight for the brush beat diggers. We've talked about this already, but for a team like Brush that's built to run the football, a night like tonight plays perfectly into your team's strength. It well, sounds like the Tiger defense has been more than capable of holding their own. That was the case early as they held the Beat Diggers to one yard rushing in the first quarter. Beat Diggers shot themselves in the foot, fumbling the kickoff after Sterling went up 13 nothing on their 64-yard touchdown pass. Line formation again, again. Wellen will move to the far side. That's Kyle Wellen. They'll sweep pass or pitch far side to Jace Krieger, and Krieger is stretching that defense out east and west. Never got going north and south. Gain of maybe a yard on the play. Third down, and we'll call it seven. This Tiger defense is so fast, Ben, that you can't run east and west and expect to pick up big chunks of yardage where they're easily exploited or more easily exploited is up the middle where they don't quite have the same size they've had in years past, but there's a ton of team speed and athleticism, especially on the defensive side of the football. The Diggers in four-down territory, no question, having missed their extra point. They'll go up in far side in a split backfield behind Maltos Garcia, who's going to drop back after a pair of motions looking to pass and gets gobbled up and dropped, sacked for a loss of seven on the play by a couple of black shirt Tigers. Like number 57, Brady Albrandt was the first one off the pile. I also believe Keaton Kanab was in there as well. And bring up a fourth and long for the Beat Diggers. And it looks like they may bring the punt unit out. 
Uh, they, their punts uh, did not go very far in the first quarter. When they punted it off, they will take a time out uh, before they make the decision. But I think they only had about a 28-yard punt because of the cold weather. It's not easy. Special teams kick it. This time out brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, Greg Mullen and his team are there to make sure the insurance world is easy for you. Call them at 842-4555. Sterling Tiger football has two timeouts remaining. They burned one in quarter number one when they were a little bit mystified by some of the early penetration the beat diggers got defensively. But figured it out following that timeout. The Tigers have touchdown drives of 10 and 7 plays. The beat diggers have a touchdown drive of 13. That's why we're looking at 8.12 p.m. and are dang near at halftime. One ten to go. Tigers up 21-6 out of the timeout. And the beat diggers will go for it on fourth down and 13. Split backfield. Maltos Garcia will drop back to pass. Pressure. He's hit as he throws. He sails the pass. And it's incomplete. And it'll be a turnover on downs for the brush beat diggers. I think that was Caden Nelson who came flying in on the penetration. Yeah, number 33 came through that line and got in the face of Maltos Garcia. Right now the Tiger defense having their way with the offensive line of Brush. First and 10 from your own 34 with 103 remaining and a pair of timeouts. Tigers have just 10 yards of offense in this second quarter. 10 for Sterling, spread formation. Tight end on the right side of the formation. Single back is Poland's play action pass. Pass over the middle is caught. That's the tight end across midfield, and he's brought down in beat digger territory. That was Kyle uh, Ryan Wecker, excuse me. 21 yard gain in a seventh first down of this first half for the Sterling Tigers. Hurry up for the offense as they stack trips receivers to the right for shotgun uh, Shala in the shotgun. Screen pass near side. That's Meyer slips out of a tackle, tries to get another one, but he gets his shoes taken out from under him. Just short of the 40 yard line, call it the 39. Short gain on first down, second down, and about six to go. Shala in the shotgun from the beat digger. 41 yard line looking to pass loads up the deep ball near side Tucker Myers at the goal line he's going to be out just short of the touchdown as he slides out of bounds at about the two yard line 38 yard pitch and catch like they've done it every day in practice that's a great connection with 19 seconds to go in the first half the Tigers will hurry it up to the line. Should be a stopped clock with the player out of bounds. Shala takes the snap, hands it off. Poland barrels forward and in for a Tiger touchdown. Connor Poland's from two yards out rumbles in, and the Tigers stretch their advantage to 27 to six in the waning seconds of the first half. That touchdown will go to the credit of Poland's his second of the game, but uh, he'll definitely give himself a, uh, a nod to the pitching catch that set it up the play before. That has been the one big glaring bugaboo for Sterling this season is the ability to hit those deep passes consistently as Ryan Wecker delivers the kick, and it is true. To make it 28 to 6, Sterling. Brock Shala has battled his command, especially on deep balls this season. But boy, I tell you what, he hit Tucker Myers, who was caught in a hand fighting battle with the defender, able to break away and make a great catch on the sideline. If it was the NFL, they would have thrown a flag. That on would that. have been pass interference on somebody for sure. Yeah. And, and, and then and, they would have reviewed it and yeah. said, no, it's still pass interference, even though there's no clear and concise evidence the, o- the only reason i watch the nfl is because i have a pick with john and i'm gonna beat him this year i'm He's, trying to catch up in our yeah, uh, you beat me fantasy pick em league yeah join us on yahoo fantasy sports we've got a pick em league that's free it's just for fun there are no prizes just bragging rights yahoo fantasy sports uh the pro football pick em group 2999 and uh 1010ksir is the password can't pick this week because Thursday night football is already underway as the Tigers will kick it off. The beat diggers will return it from their own 16-yard line. That's the younger of the two Wellens, Kyle, who takes it all the way out to the 33-yard line. And the beat diggers will have 10 seconds to go in the first half. 
If they want to take one crack down the field or just kneel it, we shall see. I don't want to brag, but with 11.42 left in the third quarter of that Thursday night game, my pick looks like it may be a good one. It's 21-14 Patriots. Giants were 16 and a half point under. The uh, dog has covered every spread so far this season on Thursday night football. Beat Diggers will come out first and 10 from their own 34-yard line. Split backfield behind Maltos Garcia in a motion of Escalante to the far side. They'll hand off to Nick Wellen. Wellen's wrapped up and dropped after a gain of yard on the play, and the time will expire in this first half. The Sterling Tigers take a 28-6 lead into the locker room. Our halftime show on 1010 KSIR and 105.7 KPMX are coming up. Our Beat Digger Halftime Show is brought to you by Stubbs Gas and Oil. Fill up your cooler and gas up your car at Stubbs Gas and Oil. Easy and convenient. Make them the only stop you need on your way to the big game. Sterling Tigers lead the brush. Beat Diggers 28-6 at halftime on the Eastern Plains Sports Network. In the beginning. From our halftime show on 105.7 KPMX, brought to you by Premier Farm Credit. Mortgage options tailored to fit your exact needs. Call the gold standard 970-522-2330. Well, first half was largely all sterling, but I think the the biggest stat of this first half is the ball control. We knew it coming in. Both teams were going to try and control the ball. Both teams had touchdown drives of 10 or more plays in the first half. Which is impressive when you consider the conditions, the field conditions. It's cold. You're not moving at the same speed you normally would on a night like tonight. And to be able to just steadily march down the field, pick up some chunk plays here or there, and and be able to capitalize with points. That's huge for both of these teams, especially Brush, who found themselves down early, 21 nothing after the first. To be able to maintain that level-headed approach, okay, it's only the first half. We've got time. Let's march down the field. Let's play our game. And they were able to put it in for us. Um, I, I would look to, to see them try to do that again out of the half and see if they can uh, march another one down the field. The beat diggers need more out of their offense. 57 total yards in the first half. 12 carries, 27 yards for their stud senior back in Nick Wellen. He did find the end zone, but he's been held to just more than two yards a carry. Meanwhile, for the Sterling Tigers, they've amassed 77 Seven yards of rushing in the game on 17 carries. This Sterling Tiger team is averaging almost five yards a carry. So conversely, for Brush defensively, they need to find a way to slow some of that down because everybody's had success when running the ball for Sterling. Well, and that's all Sterling is going to do in the second half with a large lead like this. You don't need to throw the ball around. If you can continue to eat up those chunk plays and chew up the clock like they did in the first half, then by all means, go ahead and do it. Run the clock out in the next two. The victory on this chilly Thursday night. Take advantage of the elements and uh, take advantage of an opponent that hasn't been able to stop you on the ground. 231 yards of offense for Sterling. 7 for 10, 154 yards and a score through the air for Brock Shala. Even if you take the 64-yard touchdown pass off of the board for him, that's still 90 yards passing. He's been a efficient as all get out tonight the yards are less impressive to me than the completion percentage the biggest issue for brock this year has been completing passes especially those deep passes and you mentioned that 64 yard touchdown pass was on a short pass play Mm -hmm. that was then a catch and run Um, but he has really struggled to find that consistency in terms of uh, completions and to see him at 70 percent in terms of completion percentage is a big step up i've said it all season long if he could get even to 60 percent on the season that would make this offense even more dangerous and you're seeing it here tonight when he's efficient and able to find a few chunk plays over the course of the game this offense can put a point 27 plays 231 yards of offense for the sterling tigers for the brush beat diggers They've run 21 plays with 57 yards, and then you add on the fact that they fumbled a kickoff return on on what looked to be a very important series for them, and that's that's really what kind of stemmed the tide in, in in this one. Because even though Sterling had just scored to go up 13 nothing, Brush had blocked the PAT. Sterling, it looked like they'd been bottled up on that pass play, and everything started to be looking like it was heading the way of the Sterling Tigers. And and then you saw Brush, or heading the way of the Brush Beat Diggers, pardon me, and then you saw Brush, once Sterling scored a third time, finally get into their mode 
with 13 plays, marching down the field for 61 yards, and and doing what they anticipated doing coming into this game. They field the kickoff in the second half, and I think this first drive of the second half is going to tell the story of this ball game. Even though Sterling's up three scores right now, this first drive will determine are we going to see a game that potentially could get out of hand real quickly, or is Brush going to be able to chunk their way back into this one? Sterling's defense is going to have to uh, be on their A game, and they're going to have to continue to mine those assignments we saw in the first half when the Beat Diggers tried to run around the corners. The Tiger defense was more than capable of keeping up. We'll see if that remains the case in this second half. Sterling Tigers have taken the field. Beat Diggers will be out, I would imagine, momentarily. Willow Coffee and Bake Shop wants you to get a delicious treat, breakfast, or lunch option to make your day better at 921 Edison Street in Brush today. The uh, Sterling Tigers have a huge football game next week. Right on 105.7 KPMX and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. And volleyball is a big one as well. Boy, next week is an exciting week for Sterling. Volleyball at Brush, or at, uh, pardon me, University on Thursday on 94.5 The Ranch because the Broncos play next Thursday. And uh, football at Platte Valley next Friday. Boy, those are two big ones. That Platte Valley game next Friday could very well determine the Patriot League East champion because those are the two teams who have really put it together over the last couple of years but especially this season sterling off to a very hot start uh their one loss coming to a bigger stronger and quite honestly more uh filled roster of the uh scotts bluff bearcats Platte valley got a league win last week sterling got their first league win over valley so they along with brush the only three teams in the patriot league east with a 1-0 and record. Honestly, one of these two teams tonight will leave with a 1-1 and record in league play. And I think uh, barring a massive change, Sterling with a victory tonight would uh, be staring at a 2-0 and showdown with Platte Valley next Friday night. Brush has a pretty big one as well. Sterling drummed Valley pretty handily last week. They have Valley next week to the Breed Diggers. So I, I think that you look at this second half down 22 right now as not only, hey, we still can win this game because we're not down by a running clock against Sterling easily could have been with a couple of big plays that could have been broken off but you also look at this as hey we can build forward to that because I think there's some games for Brush in the remainder of their season they still do have to see Platte Valley but I don't see beyond Platte Valley one on paper that you kind of go wow that's going to be a tough one to win and that's the thing about this Patriot League East you the three that I just mentioned Stur Brush Platte Valley are kind of the three mm-hmm. in the Patriot League East outside of that uh, Fort Lupton has struggled, Weld Central has struggled, Valley has struggled. So you have an opportunity, like you said, if you're Brush, uh, regardless of the outcome of this game, obviously the first half hasn't gone the way you want it to, um, but depending on how the second half goes, you build some momentum and you can have a nice bounce back game uh, against Valley next week. So yeah, we're, we're definitely getting into the meat of this schedule for the Patriot League East, and I think uh, both of these teams will be looking to... Uh, really solidify their position by the time this one's all said and done. Brush stayed in the warm locker room as long as they could, and I can't them. blame them at all. It's uh, continuing to cool off. It's uh, still 23 degrees outside. Feels like 15, but that wind is almost completely gone now, which is going to help a little bit. I mean, it's still 23. Well, you mentioned that it wasn't as cold out here as we anticipated. It's not nearly as windy as we anticipated either. We were expecting gusting winds tonight, wind chill factors well around single digits and uh, obviously that is not the case and I don't think either team's complaining about that Uh, but like you said it's still 23 degrees outside so uh, yeah that's cold that is cold and I'll take the blame for it because I haven't done an 11-man football game in in like four years so uh, it's because I showed up that we had weird weather probably been about four years since we've had a good old-fashioned snow on the field ice in the air kind of football game tigers will be kicking off to start the second half going right to left on your radio dial bank of colorado knows that colorado is one of a kind so bank with a family-owned bank who treats you that way bank of colorado member fdic last uh time the tigers kicked off the ball didn't even get to the deep returners so they've kind of crept up a little bit with nick wellen as one of their two back alongside jace krieger Pardon me, Kyle Wellen's back. Nick is the primary tailback. You think about this brush team. They've got a lot of good sophomores this class, even with some of these seniors that are out and playing key roles right now. This sophomore class is already contributing. I think could 
continue the tradition of great brush football in a couple opportunities. The end over end kick is fielded at the 15 by Kyle Wellen. Wellen gets out near the 30 before he's swallowed up. And that's where the brush beat diggers will start with the first possession of half number two. It's good open field tackle by Peyton Rose, who was down there on coverage. He, of course, had that long touchdown uh, catch earlier in the game. He's been one of those guys that maybe doesn't carry the same recognition as some of the other names on the Tiger roster, but he has been a key contributor this season. First and 10 as the second half gets underway with Sterling leading brush 28 to 6 on the Eastern Plains Sports Network. The B-Diggers will come with a wide receiver to either side and a split backfield behind Maltos Garcia, who is under center. Snap and the handoff shown to Nick Wellen. He takes it up the middle for a gain of a couple on the play and bring up a second down, and it will call it eight, maybe even seven for the beat diggers. And the stick man keeps moving about a half yard. It's like long seven, short eight on this second down possession for Brush. Beat diggers made wholesale changes. Now with a two tight end line and a line backfield of three backs behind Maltos Garcia. They'll hand off to the first man through. I believe that is Nick Wellen. Nope, that was Kyle Wellen who gained nine on the play. That by my tally is Kyle Wellen's first carry of the game. And he gets the beat diggers fifth first down of the contest all the way out to the their own 44-yard line. And it's Kyle Wellen who goes and gets the play from the sideline and delivers it to the huddle. Same formation, seven-man line, and the three-man backfield stacked in a line. Maltos Garcia under center on first and 10. He'll hand off again to the first man through. This time, it's Jace Krieger who gets hit as he goes through. Gain of nothing on the play, second and 10. Blocking was good on the perimeter for Brush on the outside, but the middle could not prevent the penetration by Sterling. And right now the Tiger defense stacking eight men in the box, playing one high safety. They're anticipating the run from Brush, and they're going to force Maltos Garcia to throw the football if he wants to pick up some big yardage. Beat diggers change out their formation, now have a wide to either side and a split backfield with the Wellens behind Maltos Garcia. Man safety. Delay draw up the middle and sprinting through the middle of the field is Jace Krieger. He gets down inside the 30 to the 25, a gain on the play of 29 yards and a first down for the Brush Beat Diggers. It was a perfect execution offensively from Brush. They came out in what looked like a passing formation, got Sterling into a two high safety man defense and then ran that draw play up the middle and nobody was home in the middle of the field because everybody had broken off on their coverage assignments. First and 10 on the Tigers, 24 for the Beat Diggers with nine and a half to go in the third quarter. Sterling up 28 to six. Maltos Garcia will hand off up the middle to Nick Wellen, who just keeps rumbling and bumbling and stumbling all the way down near the 15 yard line for a gain of nine. Have to get it in every <laughs> single game. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. In the red zone for the second time tonight are the Beat Diggers. They'll stay in that power formation. Maltos Garcia under center of the seven-man line. They'll hand off to Nick Wellen, who throws a stiff arm, runs over a man, gets down near the 10, collects the Beat Diggers' seventh first down of the game on a gain of four. Seventh play of the drive, forthcoming. It'll be first and goal from right at the 10-yard line. First and goal. And despite that big chunk play that you got by Krieger, Brush has just methodically picked up a handful of yards here, a handful of yards there. Stay with a seven-man line in the power three-man backfield. Altos Garcia will hand off to Kyle Wellen, who pushes forward for a gain of maybe two on the play. Kyle Wellen is a decoy, a lot of motion into receiver formation for him out of this power backfield set in the first half. Who's many the first one there to make contact for the Tigers. Call it a gain of yard if that on that play. Second and goal from just inside the 10. Line backfield again. Maltos Garcia under center. I'll take the snap. Hand off to Nick Wellen who runs into the defense. Able to push his way down near the five yard line up a third down and goal for the beat diggers with seven and a half remaining in the third quarter looking to chop into sterling's 28 to 6 lead 
going to go with their goal line defense as they bring in a little more size to bulk up the front seven. This is the first third down on the drive for the Beat Diggers. They have run eight plays all either on either uh, on either first or second down. Power formation once again. They'll hand off to Nick Wellen. He's going to push on that power formation, get down near the goal line, but did not get in. A gain of about three on the play will bring up fourth and goal. Spot him about the one and a half yard line, not quite the two. And it'll bring up fourth and goal. And I think down by 22 here, if you're brush, you've got to go for it. Because even if you don't get it, you force Sterling to go the length of the field. Faithful's getting loud here yeah. in Sterling. Stir section is stomping on the stands, trying to get the feeling back in their feet and pump up their defense. Power field once again with the seven-man line and the three-man backfield. Maltos Garcia shows the quick handoff up the middle and into the end zone goes Nick Wellen on the play. No, that was Kyle Wellen on the far side, and he pops it in from two yards out, and the Beat Diggers score on a 10-play, 70-yard touchdown drive. A good deceptive handoff by Maltos Garcia. He went behind the up end on the left side of the formation, handed it off to Kyle Wellen, who was able to sneak through that tiny crack and get into the end zone and that much closer. The Diggers are going to go for true two to try and make this a 14 point game. It's still 16. The uh, Saber metrics of football say go for it here. They'll Show the handoff, then throw the pass, and the ball's picked off. Maltos Garcia trying to push it in to the end zone, and it is incomplete, so it remains a 16-point Sterling lead. It's 28-12 to with 6.25 to go in quarter number three. It was Jackson McCracken who had the interception. There was nowhere Maltos Garcia could go with that football. Tigers had a perfect defense called in that situation, didn't bite on the play action. Maltos Garcia felt pressure from behind and had one option, that was to throw the ball. And obviously, you go for two there to try to get this to be a two-possession game if you're brushed. Now you're still looking at a three-score game if you want to get back. It's still two because you well, technically, go for yeah, two, two twice. Two two-point conversions if you score the touchdown. I guess that's uh, that's true. But You're trying to get it down to where you could touchdown and kick both right. of them and only have to go for two once. Tigers will field the kickoff from the Brush Beat Diggers after that opening drive of this second half for Brush took five minutes and 35 seconds off the clock. Tigers are fine with them taking time off the clock, especially if Sterling can march back down and score here. I missed the first quarter and a half, but it sounds like special teams may be mm -hmm. a big key in this ball game with the fumbled kickoff and... Uh, the missed extra point. Yeah, well, and the Tigers fumbled the last kickoff received from Brush, but fortunately recovered it. End over end kick, taken at about the 20-yard line on the far side of the field, weaving through traffic. Great blocking up front and getting up end. It is the return man. That's Riley Bornhoft, who gets flung across the 35 to about the 38-yard line, and that's where Brush will take over first, or Sterling will take over first and 10. 27 plays, 231 yards in the first half, 154 of it through the air, going 7 for 10 on a night where it's now 21 degrees. The passing efficiency has uh, been the biggest bright spot for Sterling this evening. Brock Shaw is going to come out under center with two up ends. Now those up ends will shift into the backfield. Full house formation for Sterling under center. Shala, the handoff right up the middle. Big hole for Riley Bornhoft as he backs his way across the 45 to about the 47-yard line. Exceptional blocking up front. A gain of nine on that first down carry makes it second down and one. Tigers hustling to the line. They'll come out in that same formation. Fullbacks. Deep back again is Bornhoff. The handoff, Shala to Bornhoff, who plows forward. He's got the first down. He'll be brought down just shy of midfield. Call it the 40. They're going to put it right on midfield. Call it the 50-yard line. A pickup of a couple on second down and one. Makes it first and 10, Sterling. Nine first downs in the game for the Sterling Tigers, plus converting a uh, fourth down into a touchdown and a third down into a touchdown very efficient in their conversion ratios this evening. Receivers under center, Shala once again, they'll stick with that same wishbone formation now out of the backfield motions. I believe that's uh, 
Wecker, Ryan Wecker, who normally serves as one of the tight ends, and they hand it off to Bornhoft, and he slips, trying to get through the offensive line. He'll be downed after a gain of about a half yard as the slick field conditions result in a tackle for Brush. Pete's Farmers Co-op has a rich history dating back more than 100 years with grain services and bulk fee. Call 970-2204. First time this season I've seen Sterling run anything other than a three or four receiver set out of the shotgun. And for the fourth consecutive play, they'll run that full house backfield. Again, Wecker shifts out of the backfield and sets up on the end of the line. The handoff goes to the fullback, banging off tackles across the 45 down to about the 42-yard line. Big run there for big Drew Book. He's down to about the 42-yard line. Call it a gain of eight. Third down and a long two short one. 25 and counting to go in the third quarter. Sterling leading brush 28-12. to Three back set. Receivers to either side for Shala in the shotgun. Wecker in motion out of the backfield. Now power eye formation with Drew Book, the fullback. They'll hand it off to fullback Drew Book, and he'll bang off one, two, three tackles across the 35 down to about the 33. Another big run for Drew Book as he's just having his way with that brush defense. Sterling Tigers have only failed to convert one third down in the game. They are four for five, and the one third down they didn't convert. They scored on fourth down. Methodical drive for Sterling right here. Now they'll mix things up. Single back, backfield in the shotgun. Trips receivers to the left. Shotgun snap to Shala. The pitch goes to Polins on the option play. And Polins is going to get a short gain to about the 30. All in a pickup of three on the carry for Polins. That's one thing Brock has really done a good job of this season is recognizing when to get rid of that ball and when to keep it on the option play. And he picks the right one there and Picks up a short gain on first down, second and seven. Spotted near hash at the brush 30. Tigers up by 16, 28 to 12. Shotgun for Shala. Traditional formation for Sterling. Jackson McCracken in motion. Looked like brush jumped off sides prior to the snap count. No flag. Jet sweep goes to McCracken who cuts off of the right end and gets around the corner for another short gain, a pickup of a couple, bring up third and five. McCracken's the sixth player to carry the ball this evening for Sterling. It's the first time they've run the jet sweep this evening. It's a staple for many years for this Sterling offense when they had some blazing speed at the receiver position. Third and five, Shallow will go back under center and they'll go with that full house backfield. Book and Wecker in front of Pol or, uh, Bornhoff. The handoff goes to Book, and Book still on his feet, <laughs> carrying one, two, three, four white jerseys along with him. The state qualifier in wrestling for his first three years in high school, showing why as he carries the entire brush defense down to the 20-yard line and a first down for Sterling. 2.06 and counting to go in the third quarter. Sterling up 28 to 12, and you're about ready to run your ninth play of the drive. You're five of six on third downs in the game, one of one on fourth down, and you're running a full house backfield that Brush had no video on because, uh, well, you hadn't run it all year long. We'll come out in that same formation. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And now a timeout will be called by Sterling as there was some confusion as to who was supposed to be in the backfield and who wasn't. We'll talk over this offensive play when we come back from this timeout. But the Tigers, you mentioned, Ben, not not a big deal that Brush marched down the field and ate up over five minutes of game time on their opening drive because now you get an opportunity to do the same and you have a 16-point lead. I, I had the opportunity to conduct a weekly interview with Coach Boozmany today because you were otherwise occupied around the station and he had a twinkle in his eye when I talked to him about how are you going to adjust to the cold weather tonight and I could just tell by his answer and by the look on his face that he had something up his sleeve and uh, that something up his sleeve we didn't see in the entire first half we didn't see that wishbone full house backfield until the start of this second half and it is coming out and it is uh, it's putting the licking on that beat digger defense right now. Well, you wear them down in the first half and then take advantage in the second half. That's been the game plan thus far. Out of the timeout, first taken by Sterling in this second half. They have two remaining. They'll go eye backfield. Power eye with Book as the fullback. Ocean Man, right to left, is the lone wide receiver on the right side. The handoff goes to Bornhoff, who steps out of a tackle, still on his feet, still barreling his way forward. 
and he's going to be brought down at about the five yard line. Check that. Was that Riley Bornhoft? Was that Cade Nelson? I'm pretty sure that was Bornhoft. I know it had a three on it. I just couldn't tell if it was a one three or a three three. Tigers have first and goal from, I believe, their five yard line. It was their 12th first down of the game. That was Cade Nelson who had the carry. He's the deep back with Book again as the fullback in the power eye. Jackson Kyle in motion, lines up to block. They hand it off to the back who barrels forward, and he leans it across the goal line, and he's in for a Tiger touchdown. Cade Nelson from five yards out gives the Tigers a three-score lead once again. They're up 34-12 to with the extra point forthcoming. 10 plays, 62 yards. That's the second 10-play touchdown drive of the game for the Sterling Tigers. They have another one of seven plays. This Tiger team has chewed up clock all night long. And with the point after up and through, it's 35-12 in favor of the Sterling Tigers with 49 seconds remaining in quarter number three. Sterling Livestock knows your livestock is your livelihood. Let them handle the livestock marketing needs at 970-522-1950 since 1958. You know, Ben, since Sterling started the year with a Overtime win over Rez, in which they didn't score a touchdown until the last five minutes of the game, and then had to score another touchdown in overtime. They beat Eaton 7 nothing with a touchdown in the last two and a half minutes of the game. Their offense came alive against TCA. They were shut out until the fourth quarter against <laughs> Scott's Bluff, but put up a couple of touchdowns late in that game. Then 49 points last week against Valley, 35 points here against Brush. I would say the offense is starting to find its rhythm. Yeah, I would say so. They're at 293 unofficial yards now this evening. All of those 10 plays were on the ground on the last touchdown drive, and the Tigers will kick it off, fielded by Kyle Wellen at his own 19-yard line. He pops free on the far side, and he's ridden out of bounds at the 42-yard line. That's where the Beat Diggers will start with their second drive of this second half. We knew it was going to be a night where ball control was going to be the key, as cold as it was. But if you were to tell me that between Brush and Sterling, we'd see 20 plays chew up 11 minutes and 16 seconds of the third quarter, I wouldn't have believed you. No, not absolutely not. Beat Diggers going back with their powerhouse backfield in the seven-man line. They only broke the huddle with 10 players. Had That's... to get generally a disadvantage yeah. had to get jace krieger off the sidelines he is the left back on that line maltos garcia will hand it off to kyle wellen who gets dropped as he gets to the line of scrimmage it'll be second down in 10 which is 35 seconds remaining in the quarter Cade nelson having himself a heck of a ball game both defensively and now offensively with that five yard touchdown run moments ago keaton Kanab also in on that tackle beat diggers Making the changes back toward their passing formation with just 15 seconds remaining in the quarter. I'm not sure the beat diggers are going to run another play. Hurry to the line, breaking the huddle with nine seconds remaining in the quarter. Wide receiver near sided and up end also near side. Maltos Garcia takes a snap as the quarter comes to a close. Hands off to Cardenas, who is the up end near side, and he's dropped for a loss of seven on the play. And Sterling will take a 35 12 lead over Brush into quarter number four, back in 60 seconds with that fourth quarter on the Eastern Plains Sports Network. 35-12, the Sterling Tigers lead the Brush Bee Diggers. We welcome you back to Sterling for quarter number four. Maltos Garcia fakes a pitch to start the quarter and finds his man off the near side end. That's Luke Seawald converting third and 17 into a 24-yard pitch and catch. As we begin quarter number four, also on 10-10 KSIR, Brush for Morgan. I'm Ben Blackie. He's Bull Braun. Brush down Three scores now on first and ten at the Tiger 40-yard line. That's the second completion, is that right, to Seawald in this yep. ball game? Both on third downs, two catches for 35 yards for him and a first and ten. The wide receiver stretch near side. Maltos Garcia will hand off up the middle to Nick Wellen. Wellen barreling forward inside the 35, down near the 30, a gain of nine on the play. He now has 58 yards and a score, but it has taken him... That is 17 carries to tabulate 58 yards. Late sub in for Sterling as Jordan White will come in and replace 
Cade Nelson on the defensive line for Sterling. Or size up front. Settle in alongside Jordan Cloverdance. Split backfield behind Maltos Garcia on second down and one with 11-10 to go in the fourth quarter. Delayed handoff shown, then Maltos Garcia trying to throw the pass, and he's streaking far side, I believe once again intended for Seawald, and we got a pass interference call on the Sterling Tigers. I think Peyton Rose is the one that's going to get tagged with the pass interference. He got an arm wrapped around the receiver. The pass was way wide of Seawalt off of that end. I'll march it forward and give the Beat Diggers what will amount to be their ninth first down of the game. The first first down for either team by way of penalty. That's just the third penalty tonight. The officials are just as cold as everybody else and want to get out of here. Didn't I say <laughs> in, at the station, I said, what do you want to bet we don't have any flags tonight? Because the officials would be like, you know what, we're going to let them play so we can go home because it's cold. Marching it all the way down near the 15, and the Beat Diggers will go with that full house backfield. Three-man stack behind Maltos Garcia. He'll take the snap, hand off to the first man through. That's Nick Wellen, who was in the center of that. He'll push forward for a gain of three on the play, bringing up second and seven. Maltos Garcia has done a great job in selling that handoff one way or the other. He's, he's got that no-look handoff down pat. Tigers, though, not biting. They're able to stay with that running play and keep it to a short game. Second and seven with 10.35 and counting to go in the fourth cool house backfield again. Maltos Garcia will take the snap, show the handoff, and then keep it himself, trying to option pitch near side with Jace Krieger. Krieger didn't get off the line quick enough, and Maltos Garcia didn't get a pitch and loss of three as he had the quarterback keeper. And that's a dangerous play by Maltos Garcia as he kept holding that ball out, trying to find the pitch, and dangerously close to having it stripped away by the Tiger defense. Third down and 10 with 10 to go in the fourth quarter. Buckeye Welding Supply wants you to see Jay and their team for all your welding needs at 330 South 11th Avenue in Sterling. Full House backfield actually has turned into an up end far side who will motion to the near, showing the pitch to the near side, then handing off up the middle to Nick Wellen. He gets down near the 15, a gain of a couple on the play. Bring up a fourth down and eight, nine and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Tackle by Brady Albrand on the near side to keep that from turning into a chunk play. Tiger defense looking to get a stop. They got a fourth down stop in quarter number two. Beat Diggers have converted on two of their three previous fourth downs. Split backfield behind Maltos Garcia. He'll show the handoff then look to pass. Aaron it out toward the end zone. The pass hops off the hands of his intended receiver Edgar Escalante and it's incomplete and a turnover on downs after an eight play drive. Stalls in the red zone for Brush. Again Peyton Rose in coverage able to knock that ball away and the Tigers allowing Brush to march down the field and eat up some clock. Now nine minutes left in this ball game. Sterling will look to return the favor as they'll try to march down the field themselves and finish off the rest of this game. 8.56 left to go. Tigers will have possession from their own 14-yard line. First and 10 for Shala in the shotgun. Two-man backfield flanked by Book and Polens. Single receivers to either side. Snap. Handoff, no play action pass, loading up the deep ball near side and overshooting his intended receiver. He was looking for Brock Burkholder and could not find him. Tigers will be staring down a second down and 10 following that incompletion. 35 12 Sterling leads, 848 left in this ball game. Earlier tonight, Sterling Tiger volleyball with a three set sweep of brush 25 16, 12, and 10. Shotgun again for Shala, same formation, two back set, one to either side, single receiver is split to either side, the motion man is the tight end, Wecker, play action, play, play action and a quarterback keeper for Brock Shala as he pushes his way forward to about the, call it the 14 yard line, or the 19 yard line, third down and five after a gain of five for Shala. Brock will be under center, I formation, book, and Polins, the fullback and tailback respectively. Wecker, the tight end in motion. It's a fullback handoff to Drew Book, and Drew Book lowers his shoulder 
and drives his way forward. Fourth down and call it two after a gain of three for Drew Book, who's got four carries in this second half for 28 yards. Fourth and a yard after a gain of four. Seven minutes, 40 seconds in counting in this ball game. Tigers up 35 to 12. And movement up front by Brush, but not far enough to get them off sides. Shala under center, same formation, I formation with the fullback book, and it's a quarterback keeper as Drew Brock's going to lean it forward, and he's not going to have it. No, he fumbled the ball. It wasn't a quarterback sneak. He fumbled the football and lost it on the play. So Sterling turns the ball over on that fumbled snap, and with 7.20 to go in this ball game, Brush will have another opportunity deep in Tiger territory. Our coverage of Beat Digger football brought to you in part by Colorado Plains Medical Center, CPMC's experienced physicians and highly trained staff. Make your hometown hospital the place for expert quality care. CPMC helping communities thrive. Split power backfield for the Beat Diggers and a handoff up the middle to Nick Wellen on first and 10. He rumbles inside the 15, pulled down after a gain of 12 on the play. You're now looking at uh, over 70 yards for Wellen on the evening with 7.15 to go. It's cold out there, man. <laughs> I do not envy those players. <laughs> you were just out there for like two minutes. Well, and I'm also not in shape, so walking stairs is not a good thing for me. 7.06 to go, and it'll be first and 10 from the Tigers. 13 for the Beat Diggers. Pitch on the far side goes to Krieger. Krieger swallowed up after a gain of three on the play. We'll bring up second down and about seven. Tiger defense needs a big stop. You're up by three scores, but you don't want to give Brush any sort of momentum here in the last six minutes of this ball game. 6.41 to go, and Brush knocking on the door, trying to cut this deficit. Nice gain again for the Brush beat diggers. It's back field, quick handoff up the middle to Nick Wellen. He'll push inside the five, down to the four, about a yard short of the sticks. I'll bring up third down and one. For the beat diggers who've had success on third down tonight, you can see why this team has been successful throughout some of their matchups this season and how they can keep games low scoring, but with under six to go down 35-12, their turnovers have been their own hampering this evening. Third and one, Gar Martos Garcia with the handoff quickly up the middle. That'll be Kyle Wellen. No, that was Nick Wellen. No, that was Kyle Wellen. They, they, they crossed in the backfield, confused me, confused the defense, and he stumbles into the end zone after getting hit, hit by Book but stays on his feet for the four-yard touchdown run. One of the brothers, Wellen, was able to get into the end zone. Again, we talked about how this weather this kind of night plays directly into the strength of this brush offense and you're seeing it in this second half beat diggers down 17 are gonna have to get two point conversions twice at some point so they're gonna go for it here down 35 18 in the split backfield altos garcia will hand off inside to nick wellen and he is met and drilled and dropped i believe that was drew book who wrestled him to the turf and the run is no good, but the Beat Diggers find the end zone to make it a 17-point game. 35-18 with 540 remaining in quarter number four. It's been alluded to, you're still looking at a 3-4 deficit. You're going to need two touchdowns, two two-point conversions, and at the very least a field goal if your brush try to take the lead in this ball game, assuming you can stop the Sterling offense, who despite the fumble moments ago that gave Brush another opportunity, has really moved the ball at will in this second half. Our coverage on the Eastern Plains Sports Network brought to you part by Morgan Community College. Morgan Community College is there to make your dreams become a reality with both traditional and non-traditional students. Check them out at morgancc.edu. They get all of our obligatory live reads in this evening. Look I'm at you proud go. about that. You guy, you. I got them all in in a three-set sweep during <laughs> volleyball. Took some maneuvering, but I made it happen. The Diggers will kick off after the touchdown. 
Short kick bobbled at about the 25 by Peyton Rose. Started on the far side, circling near side. He's got a whole stretch of green grass in front of him. Cuts back inside towards the numbers across midfield and finally ridden down at about the 40-yard line of the Beat Diggers. A great return by Peyton Rose after it nearly started as a disaster. Yeah, he looked like he wasn't going to be able to hang on to that. He's already dropped one return on this frigid evening, but was able to find a handle on that one, and the Beat Diggers couldn't find a handle on him. The Sterling Tigers will start in Beat Digger territory for a second time this evening. Brush has started inside Sterling territory twice tonight as well. That's a 35-yard kick return for Peyton Rose to set up the offense, first and 10 near Hash from the Beat Digger 40. Shala in under center, two receivers set, high formation behind him. The handoff goes to the tailback, Riley Bornhoft, and Bornhoft is going to push his way forward for a short gain, call it a pickup of a couple, second down and eight. Erling, at this point, up by three scores, just trying to eat up chunks of yards and chunks of clock along the way. Second down and eight from the beat digger, 38-yard line. Shala under center. High formation once again, this time sends Wecker the tight end in motion, left to right, the handoff to Bornhoft again, who lowers his shoulder, is tripped up across the 35 to the 34, a pickup of about four on the carry, will make it second down, and four, third down and four for Sterling. Sterling's five for seven on third downs this evening. 35 to 18, 15 and counting left in the ballgame. From the beat digger, 34 yard line. Shala under center, no, uh, in the shotgun, excuse me, hands it off. This time, Connor Polins, who slips through uh, the hole, carries a couple of tackles along with him. Was that Connor or was that Riley again? It may have been Riley Bornhoft once again who got the carry. It was 13. He gets down to the 27-yard line. First and 10, Sterling. Jackson Kyle off to the left. Jackson McCracken wide right. Shala in the shotgun, up ends on either side for the Tigers. Snapping the handoff, no, the fake keeper for Shala as he circles around the near side and picks up a small chunky yards to about 21 yard line. A gain of six on that first down carry, second down and four from the B Digger 21 yard line. Tigers looking to add on to their three score advantage. Working out of the shotgun, again they go two receivers with that stacked line. In the backfield is Polins. Bornhoff, the receiver in motion right to left, the handoff to Connor Polins. He's stacked up and met at the line and driven back for a short gain of about a yard, making it third down and three. Penetration by the brush defense that time. Rare Thursday night football game. A lack of officials. Each team had to move one game from a Friday night. Selected and go with a doubleheader here at home. I formation on third down and three. The handoff goes to Poland's Noah Keeper for Shala. Stiff arm as he gets around the corner, angling towards about the 15-yard line. He's going to be close to first down yardage. They've spotted him down at about the 16, and they are going to say he had enough for the first down. So got three and a half on a third down and three to move the chains, did Brock Shala, thanks to a filthy stiff arm on a beat digger defender. Link the lead at the very least run out the remainder of this ball game and at the very most tack on some insurance points. Oh nine and counting to go. I formation behind Shala and flags will fly. Delay a game on the Tigers as they tried to wait as long as they possibly could and they were a beat too late. Marching back five yards to the 21. First down and 15. 35-18 Sterling. Tigers will look to move 2-0 in Patriot League East play and 4-1 overall. Handoff goes to Book. Book barrels out of a tackle, spins away from another, then lowers his shoulder pads and barrels over a would-be tackler. Talk about rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Turns into a gain of only three. But those were three hard-earned yards for Drew Book. Beat Diggers will fall to 1-1 one one in Patriot League East play, and they will fall to 2-4 overall on the year. High formation, second down and seven. 
From about the 13-yard line of the Beat Diggers, the handoff goes to Bornhoff. Bornhoff patient running. Ball stripped away at the end, but it was already blown dead after forward progress was stopped. Third down and five for Sterling. Tigers can get a first down without getting a touchdown if they can get the ball to the five-yard line. Under a minute remaining, they get a first down. They'll probably run this one out. Third down and five from the Beat Digger 10. Power eye formation. Drew Book lined up at fullback on the right side. The pitch and around the corner goes Polens at the five at the goal line, and he's in for a Tiger touchdown. A 10-yard touchdown run for Connor Polens as he took the pitch and went off the right end, and there was nobody there to catch him. That's Polens' third score of the game. Doesn't even have 50 yards rushing, but he has three touchdowns. Now he knows how Aaron Jones feels for the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. The kick from Kyle Wecker is wide of the mark and no good. So Sterling looking at a 41-18 to 18 lead with less than a minute to go in this ball game. Quite impressive what the Sterling Tigers have done this evening. 14 first downs. They also have uh, on their touchdowns one, two on third down and one on fourth down. So you count those as conversions as well. 17 conversions into first downs or touchdowns uh, this evening. Uh, you add the other scores that they have on first downs and quite impressive for Sterling and, and what they've done. Uh, the Brush Beat Diggers have had uh, a decent game on the ground, but they found themselves down early, and you can't do that when you're a team that is reliant on the run as Brush is. And that's what Sterling's been able to do in a couple of these games against teams who run the football. They've gotten leads early and big leads early, and it's forced teams like Brush, like TCA, out of their element and has given Sterling the opportunity to come away with victories. Seven of nine on third down for Sterling tonight, which is a very impressive stat at the high school level to convert that regularly. Deep kick for the Sterling Tigers is picked up by Kyle Wellen, who runs into one of his own players and gets stopped just shy of the 25-yard line. Yeah, Kyle Wellen had a full head of steam, and he came barreling right into Eric Gable Risch. Who, uh, got turned around trying to block and didn't see the train that is Kyle Welling come in his direction. Just 30 seconds remaining. We will have our post-game show on this evening because we have a space heater in the press box. And, uh, <laughs> well, we do want to, to get home. We can, it's uh, actually you know, pretty pleasant in here. very pleasant. I still have feeling in most of my extremities, so that's a plus. We were smart and didn't open the window this <laughs> evening. I know. Beat Diggers will go with Maltos Garcia under center in a split backfield. The handoff... Up the middle to, that will be Nick Wellen. He'll gain about four on the play. Nick and Kyle Wellen have amassed more than 100 yards rushing this evening, and Brush is going to trot off the field with that run. Your final score tonight, Sterling 41, Brush 18. The Sterling Tigers have won their third home game of the year, and Brush falls to 2-4. and four. We'll have our post-game show after this three-minute break on the Eastern Plains Sports Network. To Tiger Field, Sterling Tigers victorious 41-18 to 18 over the Brush Beat Diggers. I'm Ben Blecka alongside Bull Brom. Our post-game show brought to you by Mr. D's Ace Home Center. I'm Ben Blecka, you're Bull Brom. Did I think I turn that's right. Around? I okay. don't know. No matter the weather you track at this point. <laughs> no matter the weather your animal care needs are covered by Mr. D's. Check them out in Sterling, Fort Morgan, and Brush. Sterling Tiger football has found their offensive mojo bowl. Ninety points in the last two games. <laughs> and three hundred and forty six yards tonight. hundred and fifty four through the air all in the first half. hundred and ninety two on the ground with six different players carrying the ball. Pretty impressive what they, they have done here this evening. It's the first time we've really seen the running game be the focal point of the Tiger offense. They've been willing to sling the ball around a little bit, but we knew coming into this game, based on your conversations with head coach Rob Buzmeni and just 
based on what we know about high school football in general, when it's cold like this and the field conditions are the way they are, you generally run the football, and that's what both teams came out here and did. It's not like uh, Brush was stymied on the ground in the second half, especially as they really churned up some yards in route to making this, I think, a closer game than people expected going into half. Yeah, 178 total yards of offense, 137 yards on the ground. The big contain for the Sterling Tigers was that Nick Wellen only had 27 yards in the first half. He finishes with 61 yards in the second half, 88 uh, total yards yards in the ball game on what would be 22 carries unofficially he scored one time Kyle Wellen five carries 17 yards a pair of scores in the second half I think really showing that that this uh, this beat digger team has multiple weapons and I think they're going to be just fine but they're going to have to win every game they should win the rest of the way if they want to have a chance to get in the postseason and Sterling found themselves in that position last year where they lost some games early had to go on a winning streak to try to salvage their season. Unfortunately, found themselves just outside the RPI looking in. Brush again finds themselves in that position where they're going to have to win out if they want an opportunity to sneak in to the back end of the RPI. And, and obviously, you mentioned the weapons they have on the, in the running game. If this team wants to be successful going forward, they need to find another dimension to that offense. Yeah, it's cool if you can run the ball and run it with that kind of authority. But if you run against a team that can stop the run like Sterling did in the first half, it's going to put you behind the eight ball, which is where Brush found themselves going into the locker room. Um, I, I think Brush has the weapons to find that extra dimension to their offense, but they're certainly going to have to put it together in the back half of this season. No one player really stood out. Nobody eclipsed more than 100 yards rushing. In fact, the leading rusher in this game was Nick Wellen with 88 yards. Drew Book has 68 for the Sterling Tigers, 44 yards on the ground, and uh, three scores for Polans uh, on the Sterling Tigers side. The the thing to, that stood out to me, and that's our stat of the game, brought to you by Gordon Insurance, a full-service independent insurance agency with offices across Colorado and now in Sterling. Find out more at GordonINS.com. Sterling was 7 of 9 on third down conversions. Brush was 3 of 8. That's that's the difference in this ball game at 41-18 when you convert at that ratio in those key moments in this type of weather. In, in any sport, you can generally point to one thing that's swings the tide one way or the other uh, for Sterling softball on Thursday in their win or uh, on Wednesday in their win over Lions it was batting average with runners in scoring position they hit over 500 with runners in scoring position while Lions hit like a buck 54 tonight football field you convert seven to nine on third down you're one of your two fourth down conversions turns into a touchdown. So um, you, you convert in those big spots. You force the defense to stay on the field that much longer. You wear them down. And uh, like you said, for Brush, you couldn't get the off. You couldn't keep the offense on the field, and therefore Sterling's offense had an opportunity to continue churning up yards and putting up points. So yeah, absolutely. That stat stands out more than any other when you look at the total numbers between these two teams. Oh, well, we pulled it off. We weren't sure we were going to be able to pull off a double header, but we did. Thanks I was to our... honestly surprised I got here as quick as yeah. I did because when I looked at what time we were going to start that volleyball match, I went, well, this is going to be late. 105.7 KPMX had the volleyball and football double header. 1010 KSIR had our football game in its entirety. Thank you to Herrick back in the Eastern Plains Sports Network studios on 1010 KSIR and to Chris Gross on 105.7 KPMX. He's Chris Brom. I'm Ben Black. I got our names right this time. Tigers win 41-18 on a Thursday night. Stay warm with the Eastern Plains Sports Network.